This is the ultimate kayak fish finder, and I'm about to tell you why. My name is Wes Littlefield with YourBassGuy.com, and today's video is all about the best kayak fish finder. I have personally tested out all three of these on my kayak, and I gotta say, I was fairly impressed with all of them, but there was one that stood out the most, and that was the Garmin Echo Map. To tease you, I'm gonna start with the first one that I bought, and the beginner model, if you wanna call it that, and that's the Garmin Striker 4. I think this is an excellent model for beginners, number one, because I bought it as a beginner, but it's got just the basics on there that you need to actually learn how to read sonar, how to set it up, and all that kind of stuff. The Striker 4 is very inexpensive at under $150, and there's a couple of other upgraded models that you can buy that get a little more expensive, but overall, like for under 200 bucks, you cannot beat this. It's small enough for your kayak. It's you know, it's not too bulky to get in the way. It does not have a touch screen, which is kind of a downside, but I mean, it's not that big of a deal. The buttons work great. It has G GPS capabilities. And like I said, overall, it's an excellent little kayak fish finder. Now, if you're looking to upgrade, I would suggest going with the Lowrance Hook Reveal. This little unit impressed me way beyond I expect I was expecting because I went from this little bitty screen to this one and I was just like blown away by the capabilities of this one. Specifically, this model has down scan and side scan. It does not have live sight capability, so if that's something you're interested, you're gonna have to get a more expensive model, but it was awesome. It This also does not have a touch screen, and I will say that it was a little big for my kayak. Now, I would suggest going like a seven inch, and, and I really wouldn't wanna go smaller than a seven, and I wouldn't wanna go bigger than a seven, because bigger like this, it just, it got in the way, and I hit it when I was paddling, and you know, if I had it so far away, then I wouldn't be able to see the screen very well, and there was, you know, kind of playing, compromising with the distance and everything. So I think a seven inch would have been much better, but this nine inch did an excellent job. I had multiple different sonars running at the same time, and I could see them just fine. I could pick out fish, I could pick out brush piles, and it was great. Another drawback, you can call it that, is when I was paddling, I would get the screen wet and the water droplets would dry, and they were kind of hard to scrub off. It wasn't that big of a deal, just get a little Windex and wipe it off and then it came off pretty easy. But when you're out paddling and you know get water on it and don't have anything to dry it off immediately, the water droplets will dry and they bugged me. They might not bug you, but they bugged me. Other than that, for a kayak, this is a perfect intermediate model. You know, like I said, I went from this model to this model and this one blew me away just between the differences and it's not that much more expensive. I'm gonna say you could probably find one from $300 to $800, depending on exactly what model you get, what size screen and all that stuff. So totally reasonable and not overpriced, especially for all the features that you get. Now let's talk about my favorite one for a kayak. This is actually the seven inch screen and it was perfect for my kayak. It, it wasn't too big that it got in the way and I hit it too much, but it was big enough that I could see even if I had down scan, side scan, and traditional sonar running all at the same time. It was outstanding. Another huge advantage that I took advantage of when testing this unit out was live scope. These two don't have any kind of capabilities, like I said, of getting that next upgrade without buying a completely different unit. Whereas this one, you can buy this unit and just run it with down scan and side scan and traditional, or you can upgrade and um, add on live scope. Obviously it's gonna cost you more. And when you put live scope onto this, you lose the ability to do side scan. Now it's not that big of a deal. I, and I've done a couple of videos on explaining why it's not that big of a deal, 
but essentially it's just because live scope gives you the ability to see what's actually under the water right then kind of like what side scan does but live scope will give you more detail but if you like running side scan then you will have to buy a separate monitor unit here to plug a transducer into for side scan another downside it's expensive this model specifically is like uh, $1,100 or somewhere around that range and you know the bigger screen you get the more expensive they are and I want to say they make a 5 inch screen don't hold me to that but the 5 inch screen I wouldn't want to run down scan side scan and sonar on a 5 inch screen the 7 inch screen was kind of pushing it at that point another downside to this was it was a bit overwhelming because like I said I, I'm used to running super basics didn't have a lot of details as far as adjustments you could make or all these different add-ons and everything whereas this one it's it's one of the top of the line and it can be a little bit overwhelming so it is a drawback but I picked it up pretty quick I mean it, it wasn't like just Oh my gosh I'm never gonna figure this out but it was just like hit you like oh wow there's a lot to do here a lot of these features that I have no idea what they are and then you start playing around with them and you figure them out pretty quickly another drawback to this was the lack of a keypad and yes there's th this keypad but it's just for zooming in and out and then your shortcut buttons for going to whatever you want to set them to and if your hands are cold or you're wearing gloves the touch screen it sometimes doesn't cut it i will say though that this screen was really nice for getting water on and it water ran right off when it the water dried on there i actually just had to take a cloth and wipe it down and it was perfect i didn't even have to use windex but when i was in the sun and the sun would just hit it just right it did have a little bit more reflection than even this screen believe it or not which kind of surprised me now that's not that big of a deal once again because you can simply reach down there and adjust it real quick or uh, you know just turn your kayak a little bit and get out of the sun angle like that so yes it was a drawback but it wasn't that big of a deal as you can tell i still like this one a whole whole lot even with all the downsides and i say all the downsides there was three or four downsides but for kayak fishing, it's hard to beat because you can upgrade it afterwards, after purchasing this. You know, you don't have to go and spend the extra $1,500, $2,000, whatever, on live scope when you can just run this unit and then save your money up and go get it later. So if you're looking to get into tournaments, if you're a serious weekend angler and thinking about getting live scope, this is the unit for you. If you're a beginner, just trying to learn everything go with the Garmin Striker 4 and if you are an intermediate looking to upgrade from a basic model or even a beginner wanting to just dive in and learn a lot of the features this is an excellent place to start it's not overwhelming and I highly recommend for beginners and intermediates here and as always you can find these links in the description below for all of them, we get a small commission every time you purchase, but it's no extra cost to you. And until next time, remember that education is important, but fishing is essential.